I have another flashlight review for you. This time it is the X0 Night from Wubin. Nice tiny little EDC light. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this light, keep watching. All right, just before we begin, I would like to thank Wubin for sending me the X0 so that I could share it with you. So as always, we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over its key features, its physical and performance specification, how it operates, and then of course, we'll get outside and do some testing. All right, just before we take a closer look at the X0, let's show you what it came with. This is the box that the light arrived in. Inside of the box, of course, is the manual with warranty information a pair of spare o-rings which I wasn't expecting and I'll explain why in a moment and a USB type-c charging cable let's put those things aside now just before again we look at the key features for this light I thought I'd share with you that the X0 also known as the X0 night is the smallest in the X lineup or took a light talk lineup from Wubin. So I have previously reviewed this guy, the big one. This is the X1, referred to it as an EDC light, but only if you're going to be carrying it in a holster because it is quite a big lamp. And I've also reviewed the X2, which they all share some familiarity. Obviously the X1 and X2 look somewhat the same, more so than maybe the X0, but the X2 and the X1 share a very common operating system in terms of the switch. So I'll talk more about that in a moment. All right, now having done, shown you the other two lights, let's get into the key features. So it does have a rather fast recharge time of one and a half hours, which is pretty good. Uh, it does have that same flip switch as reviewed in the X2. We'll talk more about that in a minute. It has a magnetic base, which is different from the other two, and this makes it a much more versatile versatile light in terms of mounting it in different places and making uh, good use of the light. It has a unique feature. Now, since this is the black anodized version, I'm hoping it shows up, but there are little slots milled in four corners around the base of it and around the top of it and one right up here. And those are so that you can purchase, if you'd like, as an option, not from Wubin, but from other locations, tritium tubules, little tritium tubules. So they are self-illuminated little tubes that you can slide into those slots and just customize your light a little bit if you want to. Kind of different. I don't think I've seen that on any other light at all. All right, let's go through the physical specifications for this light. So the weight, 2.89 ounces or 82 grams. The length in this direction, 2.24 inches or 57 millimeters. The width across its narrowest in this direction is 0.96 inches, which is 24.5 millimeters. And at its wider across here, it is 1.1 inch, which is 28 millimeters. You can see also that it has an installed pocket clip on it. Again, I have comments to say about that, but it, it is nice looking in terms of its anodized blue nature matching the switch on the top. Uh, just, just contrasts kind of nicely. It has an IP68 rating, which is to say it can be submerged underwater for two hours, and it has an impact resistance of 1.5 meters. All right, as far as performance specifications go, there are two versions of this light, each with a different LEDs. This one has the Samsung LH3510, but there is also an Osram P9 LED. I'm going to give you the specs for this one, the one I have, uh, because of course that's what's relevant, but I would list the specifications for the Osram P9 LED in the video description if you're interested. So starting at the top, this has a turbo of 900 lumens, which will last for one minute and then drop down to 300 lumens, which will last for another two hours. It has a high of 250 lumens, which will last for 2.5 hours, a medium of 150 lumens lasting 15 hours, a low of 50 lumens lasting 40 hours. It does have moonlight of one lumen, which will last 120 hours. And it has both a strobe and an SOS. The strobe will blast out at 1000 lumens and the SOS at 50 lumens. All right, before we go through the operation of the x I thought I'd just focus in a little bit so that you can see how the operating switch functions. So it is identical to the X2 flashlight I previously reviewed. Little 
lever here and the lever is held down by magnets. It lifts very easily, but it held, it won't open up unintentionally because of those magnets. The lever itself actually functions the operating switch, which is that little oblong of white underneath the center there. So that's the operating switch. And just ahead of that is the USB Type-C charging port, which has on either side of the magnets that hold it closed. And I know when I looked at this, I thought there's no way this can have an IP68 rating with an exposed port like that. But the way it is accomplished is the port is actually isolated from the rest of the flashlight. So any water that gets in there will not migrate into the rest of the light. And that's how that works. Okay, as far as operation goes, like most of the lights from moving, long press and you'll have the moonlight mode. Turn it off again. If I give it a quick press, it's going to come on in the last setting. So it has memory and that last setting in this case is moonlight again. And if I press and hold it, it will work its way up through the setting. So there's moonlight, low, medium and high. If I double tap it, it goes into turbo. If while in turbo, if I double turbo, if I double tap it again, it goes to strobe, and if I double tap it again, it goes into the SOS mode. And if I turn it off, what happens is it goes back to high, and that's where the memory will kick in on this. So let me just turn that off again. Now, there are a couple of other really key features for this light. One is the fact is that it has an electronic lockout, which is operated by four quick presses of the on-off switch, and then you can't operate the light. Great if you're carrying this in, po in your pocket so it doesn't accidentally turn on. And to unlock the lockout, again, just four quick quick presses. It does have an, a little blue LED, let's see if I can get that to show up for you, which indicates the battery status charge. So when it is has sufficient charge and is in operation at the same time, it'll flash blue. When you're charging it, it'll flash red, blue when it is fully charged. One other small feature that I think is worth mentioning is that this has a programmable mode in it as well. Now, I'm not going to go through the way that operates. It is very well detailed in the Wobin manual, and I expect only people who really want to customize their light will do this. But what it allows you is a range of lumen settings for each of low, medium, and high. So there is the range is set in at one range, but if you want to vary that range and have your low, medium, high at different ranges. There's a, a procedure for doing that. Nice option. Uh, personally, I don't find that of a whole lot of use, but I'm sure some people will want to uh, use that mode and customize their lumen outputs. All right, having gone through the specifications, both the physical and the performance specification, as well as the modes of operation, there are just another few more features that I want to share with you. First, I want to come back to the pocket clip itself. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I can consider this much of a pocket clip. It really is too stiff to operate, at least trying to get it into your jeans and get your jeans to work your way up through there. However, it does make a place where a piece of webbing can go through. So if you had a backpack or something that you wanted to get this on and use it as a headlamp, and not so much a headlamp, but a lamp that you could put on, say, the sternum strap of your backpack, I think that's where it'll come in. So it does have some mounting options that way. I think it's kind of cool. I didn't pick this up right away. It took a while to see it, though, but I thought it was just part of the aesthetics. But it has these milled or chamfered corners. And what that allows is it not just an aesthetic look, it actually allows the light like to sit at, bring it in so you can see it, at 45 degree angles, which is also make, adds to the versatility in terms of illumination. So you can lay it on its side, of course you can lay it at 45, and of course you can lay it so it faces upwards, and as I mentioned, it has that magnetic base. Now let's turn to the magnetic base for a moment. So again, this is something that was different from the other two lights in the series, this X series, in that this light came with a pair of spare O-rings. I was a little confused because the instructions for the other two lights specifically say do not remove. It has, they both have tiny screws that would require you to take them out if you wanted to access the batteries. Apparently the batteries are accessible, but in doing so you could void your warranty. This one is different. You actually are permitted to access to the battery without void voiding the warranty, of course, but it, the complication is how. If you look at the base, what you'll see is there's four little milled spots in the base and it requires a special tool of some type in order to turn the base. So I looked around to see what I had and a split pair of split ring pliers worked just fine and it was very easy to open. Now that I've opened it at least once, I should be able to open it now. Uh, 
not necessarily the recommended procedure, but I am able to use my fingernails to get this started. Let's see if I can keep going with this. Here we go. It's coming up, turned it on unintentionally, but let's turn that off. So you can actually get access to the battery in this light by unscrewing the base. It's just that it's got that special requirement for a tool. I tell you, I think what would have been nice if they wanted to give you permission to access the battery, or not permission, but a means to access the battery, why not just a milled slot, something that you could use a screwdriver or even a coin in to uh, open it up. I think that would have been a little bit of a better choice, but here we go. Uh, there is the battery. It is one of the uh, 18350 batteries with an 1100 milliamp charge in it. So yeah, there it is all put together. So it does, as I mentioned, have two spare O-rings to protect the light from water intrusion. See if I can get this down to a point where it'll operate the light. Is it going to operate? Yep. All right. So it's down far enough. All right. So those are just a couple of the additional features I wanted to mention on this light. I think really there's only one thing left, and that's to get outside and do some demonstrations. Doing some nighttime testing for the Wubin X0 Night EDC flashlight. You're not going to see moonlight, so I'll just start it right off on low. And even that is pretty darn low. Let's hold it and tap it up to the next one. All right, now we're starting to see a little bit of illumination and still not much in the backyard here. Certainly nothing you could navigate around with. Let's take it up to the next level. Medium is doing pretty good. Now high, high is when you can start to really use this thing outdoor. It's doing a good job of illuminating my backyard, neighbor's backyard in the garage, but let's just try turbo. Okay, now that is a lot of light for a small little flashlight all kinds of flood, actually pretty much all flood. There is a central hot spot, but it kind of fades into the floodlight so you barely see the transition. A lot of light here in the backyard. All right, some closing thoughts for the X0 from Wuben. Nice little EDC flashlight. It has some really unique features that add to its versatility. That magnetic base on the bottom really does, as does the chamfered corner and allowing you to place it at different angles. I like the switch on these things. This and the X2 have share the common operating system as far as that goes. Yeah, great little light. It's easy enough to carry in the pocket. But that's the pocket clip itself. Do you know, I think I would be inclined to remove the pocket clip, although you're not really saving all that much in terms of bulk on the light. Probably just leave it there because it does have that feature where you can clip it onto something. I don't think it's your pocket because of the way it, it is so stiff to operate, but it is something that you can use to fix onto something like a piece of webbing or a strap of some type. What I like about this light is the fact that you can actually access the battery. Get at the battery to replace it if you need to, and to replace the O-rings if you need to do that. Overall, it's a great little light. Now, if you wanted to ask my opinion which one I would sooner carry with me, well, this is certainly a bit more compact, but this just has more capability and not that much greater size. This has a lot of capability, but is much, much bigger. But uh, yeah, I think what I'll do is, if you want to learn more about the X2 and the X1, I have links to those videos I can place at the end of this video. It's in my series or my playlist on flashlights. They are all uniquely designed, a little bit out of the ordinary, great operating system, great performance characteristics, absolutely worth looking at. Okay, if you have any comments or question on the X0 from Wubin, please put them in the comments section below. Of course, I'll be putting all the specifications as well as the links to where you can take another look at these in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path and let's travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.